Today is November the 17th, 2005. We're in Sterling, Colorado, and we're with Mr. Herb Vandermore, a naval veteran of World War II, who's going to tell us about his experiences in the Navy and whatever else he wants to tell us. So welcome here, Mr. Vandermore. Tell us your name. <laughs> yeah, you, you just told, said my name, well, Herb Vandermore. It's okay. Right. Okay. Uh, if it's all right with you, I'd start with an outline uh, of, of how I got into the service and then go yeah. from there. Is that all right? Yeah, just okay. How did you get in the service? Denver Custom House, Denver, Colorado, in uh, the spring of 1942. So you volunteered? I volunteered, day. right. Yeah, okay. At, and, uh, and I was, I was lucky in that uh, I was in school as a sophomore in Carter College and had no idea where the V-12, which was what the Navy, uh, the Navy program let you go to a school that, uh, that had Navy training. And with that training, you would, you would eventually get to a midshipman school and eventually come out an ensign in the Navy. Where I was lucky was that uh, Colorado College, right after I joined, uh, became one of the Navy schools in Colorado. Colorado University became the other one, and uh, CC at, uh, at Colorado Springs. And what year was that? That would have been, uh, well, we, 9-13-42 would have been September of 42. Uh, we were given uniforms as apprentice seamen at Colorado College and started our program there. And we went right ahead with, uh, I've been playing football at Carter College, so I continued. Uh, we, had, we had players from Stanford and Utah, Brigham Young, from lots of schools around the, in the area that uh, were sent to CC. And uh, I was lucky in that I was already there and set up, you might say. So then uh, I stayed there during the apprentice seaman stage and uh, left there uh, in early, early November. I left there and went to uh, Columbia University in New York City to midshipman school. It was commissioned in the Navy as an ensign on February 24th, 1944. And my location of basic training was of course Columbia University and Midshipman School in Camp Radford, Virginia, uh, which was a <laughs> training for uh, landing craft. And then uh, I went from there to bring, uh, Hingham, Massachusetts to pick up a new LST number 920. Have to think a little bit in between times because I don't remember everything exactly. Well, you um, know, so during that time, that was the 40s, and there was a That's war in the Pacific and the war in Europe. The Atlantic, yes. And so uh, things were really red hot. And you you were a commissioned an ensign, is that correct? Yes, commissioned and an ensign. And then you had a command given to you, was it the... Yes, and I was sent to uh, Hingham, Massachusetts uh, to pick up a new LST. It wasn't, it wasn't uh, completely built then, so we had to work kind of around them as they finished the boat. And then, uh, then, then after we had that, then we started overseas then. So, so you picked up, you picked up uh, landing craft? Landing, landing craft, yeah, LST 920. How big was that? It get? was 300, 300 feet long and uh, not very wide and uh, had a flat bottom and uh, we had seven officers and uh, 100 men aboard. aboard. So uh, 100 we were, men were crew, or were they? There was, they were. Uh, they were. We could carry four or five hundred troops okay. when we were when shuttling. You, when you were away. shuttling, yeah, yeah, back and forth, right. So you so, picked that up in Hingham and. And Hingham, Massachusetts, yeah. yeah. And and then what happened to you guys? Well, then we then we started overseas and went to we went to England and to Scotland first, and then we went on to England, and. Uh, uh, then started making uh, shuttles across the English Channel from uh, English ports to Utah. Be, are we, 
we came to Utah Beach at this stage, but now we were not in on the first invasion. We were in, we came in later after things were a little bit, a lot better shape when we got there. And uh, we started, we started taking troops over and then gradually bringing prisoners back to England to, uh, to be there. And then in St. George's Channel with another LST with us, why the other one was torpedoed, English ship with us was torpedoed. And we picked up the survivors from the LST, which had been uh, picked up right with us in the LST 921. And uh, as a result of that, we picked up 40, 40 some men and uh, five officers out of the water. That was all that was left of that ship. And that uh, what pretty were, much What was your that. position in the boat? I was, a gun I was a gunnery officer. You were a gunnery officer, huh? Yeah. yeah. So did, did you, uh, did you have a gunnery action while you were on the ship, or? Well, we, we, <laughs> we fired the submarine after it surfaced, but we didn't ever do much of airplanes. Airplanes got the submarine. Is that right? We, uh, we had 20 millimeter and 40 millimeter uh, ammunition, but uh, I, we, didn't, we didn't hit the submarine. Just too long. <laughs> just, just, well, we just couldn't get, uh, it was, well, things were pretty confusing, and the planes were coming. Uh, the, the planes came off the English shore, and uh, they took uh, they took care of the submarine. Bombed the submarine. They bombed the submarine. Yeah. Okay. So that part was taken care of. But when was that? I mean, like that, that would have been well. I know exactly. I've got that date here someplace. I don't know that. Uh, Atlantic Ocean Channel. Someplace. August 14th, 1944, submarine attack, rescued uh, five officers and 43 men, and um, that was it. Yeah. That was that a was British it. boat that went down. No, the it was a sister ship of ours. It was a 920, boat, huh? was a 921, another LST that was right with us. So when you brought that LST, you brought it clear across the Atlantic. Yes, we which did. Was kind of Kind of a rough trip. Rough going, a flat bottom boat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Flat bottom boat. Took yeah. took thirteen days. Yeah, it did. Thirteen days to get across. I think so, the Queen so Mary does a little better now. Your, your main duty was to try and take troops across the channel, right, and come back with prisoners. And how long right. did you do that? We did that until uh, we made about three trips, and uh, an LST has a. We have a we had a stern anchor and a forward anchor, and we went into a beach where I had to drop the stern anchor and about 400 yards out, and then go on into the beach. And of course, we go in at high tide, and then of course the English Channel tide went out, and uh, we were we were sitting way up on dry land when we got in into the beach and unloaded, opened the tank doors and unloaded. But when we got in on the beach on about a third, fourth trip, why we hit a, somebody else's stern anchor and tore the bottom out of our ship. Oh, so, we were on the, so we were on the beach through a few days there, not being able to leave because we couldn't float. So we stayed on the beach till we finally got towed off and then we were back to England and then we spent about almost a month getting the bottom fixed up so we could go again. So that, uh, we made some trips to Le, Far Le Havre, France, after that, and picked up prisoners there, and it was pretty much just a shuttle back and forth, not much. And, kind and of a you know, but service. you had that submarine to contend with and stuff like that. Well, yeah, that, that during that. Neat. Well, we had a we had an LCT on our deck too, which is a a small uh, uh, what would you say landing craft that was much smaller. We had that on our deck until uh, we got the word to. Uh, list our boat to the side and let this LCT off of our boat. And then it went, went from there to the Rhine River so that they could cross the Rhine. So in other words, we lost one boat officer on, the, on that trip because he had to take go with the LCT to, uh, to the Rhine River to Rhine on that. And so then, how, how, did, how did that go from your ship to the Rhine, it didn't go overland. It went, it went overland, believe it, it or overland. not, and uh, 
They had a terrible time in the little towns trying to get through the streets of the... Yeah, those boats, is <laughs> yeah. that right? Yeah, yeah. He wrote How big his... was that? How big was that? Uh, I've got crash. a picture of it in that uh, book there. It's a, it was sitting on our tank deck and right up on the main deck. It was pretty good size when you think about taking it through a, a road in France. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So but uh, we, he did write us after he got there, and he said that was uh, almost like a combat experience to get through France, you know, just yeah. with the roads and the, all the traffic and everything. Yeah. But he got there. So then that was pretty much that. And then, uh, finally, that war was kind of settled down, and they sent us back to the States to get uh, repainted. We were in an uh, Atlantic blue color. They sent us back to the States to be camouflaged to go to Japan. Pacific, yeah. So we got camouflaged, but we didn't ever get to Japan, which was because, as you know, the bombs were dropped in... Uh, in Japan at that 45, time. 44, yeah, 45. So then we did. But then we ended up on, uh, on duty in, out of uh, Earl, New Jersey, uh, armory there. And we were the LST with a couple of freighters that uh, took out the ammunition that was condemned and either condemned or obsolete. We'd take it out to sea and we'd go out a day and a half out to the middle of the ocean. And then we'd slide it off the ship and dump it in the middle of the ocean, and we'd head back to New Jersey and load up again and go back. So we started another shuttle on that. And, it, and then we had the ship <laughs> in, the, in the harbor blow up with us tied up right alongside. And, with, and we were covered with ammunition. We had all our ammunition, everything on there, but uh, we didn't blow up. But, uh, well, yeah, I guess but, you're here. Uh, I've, I've seen the, that's in the book, too, there. That, uh, that ended up as uh, they felt that clear over to almost New York City on that explosion then. It blew up the whole ship. It was a destroyer escort, and it blew up the whole bow and it was on the front page of New York Times and all the papers and everything. So what got caused it the blow up? Was it just a... I, they just said that some sailor was moving a hedgehog, which was just a a little piece of explosive gear, somehow it set off the whole ship. We don't know what happened. Wow. So anyway, we... And you were tied we, up right next to him? We were tied up next to him, so, that, well, the uh, New York Times said that we uh, we left burning and with uh, all the noise of everybody screaming and everything, I don't think it was that bad, but we did leave. We left uh, and you harbor. you were on board, did Oh, yeah. We were on board the ship. Wow. In fact, I was laying on ammunition when the, when this explosion took place. Being a gunnery officer, that was my job. Right. <laughs> so, Jesus, that, so right. that, uh, that was probably, well, that was as much of a, what would you say, a experience as uh, the war itself. Oh, yeah. And we were, back, we were back in the States and feeling pretty good then. Yeah, feeling like you were out of reach. Yeah, right, right, out of reach till it blew up. Yeah. That's right. Jeez. Anyway, that's, uh, that's about it. So, so you ended up in uh, Boston Harbor? No, in New York. We New ended, York. ended up, and then uh, our ship went up, uh, it was kind of interesting, went up the Hudson River, and it's stored in mothballs up uh, not too far from West Point and up in that area up there. They've got a, they still have a lot of LSTs mothballed up there. In the Hudson. Mm -hmm. I had an aunt and uncle that uh, lived in New York at that time, and they saw the ship uh, go up the river. Yes, they they knew it because, of course, Living in New York when all this happened in the New York Times, why well, he was they were both sure that I'd been killed and was all and there I was, we were fine. Fooled them again. Yeah, fooled them again. They sent us out to sea for three days to sit out in the water and make sure we didn't blow up. You're kidding. Well they did. Is that right? They took us out there, they just said get out of the harbor and go out there and uh, anchor and wait till uh, Further orders. Orders, further orders. <laughs> We, well, it was a joke at that time. We didn't think we were gonna, if we were gonna blow up, we'd have blown up sure. right then, yeah. Of course. But anyway, that's it, John. So you, so you, uh, did you, did you mothball, uh, so you went? No, we didn't mothball it. They, didn't they took, a, they took so another they crew aboard, and yeah, they did that. So. I often thought I'd like to go up and see it, but uh, I'm sure in that mess of junk, it wouldn't be, be hard to find, probably. Never know. No. I think a few of them were sent to, uh, some of the poorer countries for the you know for them to use and yeah. freighters and things like that. 
But anyway, that's pretty much the, much my three years. Three years, wow. Got time flies, doesn't it? It sure does. So, uh, what was your highest rank that you got? Which admiral did you become? <laughs> I didn't quite make that. I, oh, okay. I went through apprentice, seaman, uh, ensign, lieutenant junior grade, and ended up a lieutenant. Lieutenant, yeah, okay. Lieutenant, which would have been a captain in the right, Army. Right, captain yeah. in the Army, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's good. And uh, I think did you guys, did you get medals, citations, awards? You probably did. Yeah, well, they got, I never did get them, but so we got, we were supposed to get uh, something for the American theater, for the European theater, and the World War victory, and uh, I don't have any of those. But I do have, uh, the French gave us a, a medal for the, which I have in that deal. French gave us a medal for the Utah Beach, which was nice of the French. But that, that's not been so long ago. They well, those. they gave it uh, quite a few years ago in did, France, oh, but they? you were supposed to go over there and I didn't go. Yeah. So they mailed it to me finally. Good. And uh, then uh, they, I think they said, well, I think that article said there were about 70 in uh, this area, John, that, uh, that they they'd found from, you, from the beach that uh, didn't have it yet. Yeah. So it was nice. Yeah, that's cool. And that was it. So your service was mostly in the European theater. Oh, I and didn't you ever were get the Pacific. Ready to go to right the to the Pacific. Pacific, and the bomb went off over there. And right, thank goodness. That. That's true. So. Uh, so Mr. Truman did the right thing. Well, I, you and I agree with that. <laughs> that, that was Politifies. I think that was the only thing we could do at that time. Well, yeah. There were an awful lot of people who were going to die in Japan if we went there. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. So at that time you weren't married. No, and you hadn't even met family. Lydia. So, but you had a family here, and then you had the sisters. Oh, I had I had two, two sisters, sisters, right? Two sisters yeah. and my mother and father, and uh, that was it. Yeah. No, and so as a result, when you get to that down there where you say uh, effect on the families at home, no, no effect I'm at not all. Worried about you. I just had, uh, had better gas and better sugar and things like that. <laughs> the. Uh, <laughs> Germain of this thing here, but Herb's dad and uh, Herb's dad and uh, Tootie's dad That's ran right. against each other. They did. They? That's and, true. Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, well, you got. Uh, so after you got now, you know, you know, after you got out of the service, about how old were you? I went back to school. I still, well, I have a letter in there that. Uh, by getting my commission at Columbia, YCC sent me a degree. So I had a degree, but I had the GI Bill of Rights, of course, was still there, and I still had one year of eligibility for track and football, so I went back to college. Well, good for you. <laughs> I don't know what I was going to major in this time. Huh? I went back really for the sports. Yeah, to have fun. Okay, well, so I stayed another that. year. Well, so that's what I, yeah, right, so I did that. Yes. But then I met Lydia there, so that worked out. At school. So back at school, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, then you and Lydia got married. Right, forty-seven. And, we got married. Okay, and okay, and then you have some children. Have three children, right? Okay. Have uh, who's a daughter. Your three children? Have a daughter, Corey, who is an attorney in uh, Arizona, and Craig, who is working in lumber business in Denver, and Chris, who's farming in Sterling. Okay. Yep. So, three kids. Uh, and how many grandchildren you got now? Finally, have two. Finally, have two. Okay, that's good. <laughs> Chris has two. Yeah. Two girls. Okay. You're kind of like me. I was, getting a, I was getting a little worried about having any. <laughs> That's okay. No. Okay. Um, so, and, and your business has been uh, real estate, farming, lumber. Right. Not, not real estate for me. I never did get into never real, estate, real estate. Huh? Chris did that. I've done uh, the lumber business mainly out of Denver. Craig's running that now, and uh, Chris and the farming, and I'm still. I'm still gophering for him, but that's right. about it. Yeah, that's good. That's but right. uh, no, I didn't ever get into you know, the real estate. People need to know about your family here, for instance. Your grandfather and grandmother were uh, scions of this of this city and big, right. uh, big uh, citizens. From the early days. Yeah, and uh, the George Henderson Company, yeah. isn't that? Was that's your right. grandfather, right? That's my grandfather. Yeah, and uh, so he's famous here. 
it's interesting. My dad was uh, was wounded in action in World War One, and came back to Sterling and got acquainted with my mother, who was a Henderson, and uh, he was the first, uh, whatever you call it, the leader or whatever, the American Legion that founded in Sterling, Colorado. So he had a Sterling tie, although he did, he went into Denver soon after that. But uh, my mother was a Henderson, and her dad was a, a banker in Sterling, George A. Henderson. And, uh, he had come out, he came out in 18, uh, about 1882, I believe it was, when he came to Sterling and uh, in a hardware business and then went from the hardware business into banking and then had a hardware store with uh, Frank Blair, who was uh, superintendent of the schools. They had the Henderson Blair Hardware Store and then that turned into uh, Sterling Lumber Investment Company. Just my grandfather started that. And that's still called Sterling Lumber and Investment Company, but the offices now in Denver still have a lumber yard, Logan County Lumber Yard in Sterling, Colorado, and then have lumber yards over the state of Colorado. And uh, I guess that's about, I guess, guess that's about it. My dad was Herbert R. Vandemore, where I'm Herbert H. Vandemore. The H being for Henderson, obviously. <laughs> and. Uh, my grandfather was George A. Henderson and that, uh, that came out here to Sterling in the real early days. And Phoebe was grandma. Phoebe was, Phoebe was my grandmother, Phoebe A. Henderson. Her, her name was Phoebe A. Corbin. Her sister came out ahead of time, came to Sterling, and was a postmistress in Sterling at that time. That was my Aunt Emma, as we call that was, that was uh, her, her maiden name was Corbin also. So there was Phoebe Corbin and Emma Corbin, and, and that's how my grandmother got here, because her sister had gotten to be postmistress and talked her into coming out, and then she met my grandfather here in Sterling. So everything goes together. Good. Yeah. <laughs> Those old timers. <laughs> I don't know. About no, the younger people don't know. Them, <laughs> no, I don't, I don't know. understand how much that's you did true. here and everything, yeah, and that's how true. great the family was about things. Yeah. So uh, that, that's great. Let's see. Okay, let's uh, let's take a look at the. Uh, want to show us your scrapbook and stuff? Sure. I just want to just take a minute to just go well, through the pages. Yeah, uh, we had a lot of transfers from Utah State, Brigham Young, and Stanford, and and then we had some that had been at Colorado College before. And this this one right here just shows that uh, how many list includes. Uh, this is when some of us, Hagen, Vandemore, Marines to stay. This is when we left CC to go to Columbia. Now the Marines went to another base and I went there to Columbia. So that's all there was there. And then this is uh, 1160 more ensigns for our fleet. Here's the graduate, <laughs> this is a graduating class that's at Columbia. Class. That's our graduating class at Columbia University, yeah. Wow. And uh, that's in New York Times, that one there. And then this is, this is a good one. I didn't have to take any comprehensive exams because the college, after I got my commission, the college, uh, Mr. Hershey was the president and he said because I'd gotten a commission and the war was on all, he'd give me a, my graduation from Carter College. So that took care of that. And then this, this, is, a, this is a picture of our ship, the US 920. And here we are on Utah Beach. Yeah. Hang tight, man. Oh, sure. I can. Okay, now, this is, uh, are we running? Yeah, okay. This is your. This is your. This uh, is our LST, right? And this is this is the bow of our ship on the Utah Beach. You can see the other uh, uh, LCTs and small craft are in ahead of us, and maybe some stuff. This is at uh, low tide, and we're we're high and dry, John, on the on the, on beach, the beach yeah. at Utah Beach, right? Yeah, wow. That one. I think I've got some more right on through here, and then the other page. You want to go to that next one? That's just Merry Christmas in, uh, 
December 25th, 1944, and this is our ship, and you see we, uh, we ate pretty well. That's the name. Did you have a good meal that day? Had a good meal that day. Sure did. I'm getting a lot of clear on it. Yeah, didn't I didn't that, Yeah, that's better. So that was your Christmas? That was our Christmas dinner. <laughs> okay. Seven. Seven and one hundred, ah, well. and then here's what's this one? This is uh, this is probably this is more of that. This is this is <laughs> this is me. This is a man named Colson, and this is a man named Climber, and this is the boatman that went on over on the LCT and to go across the Rhine. That was uh, Ed Climber, and it was a real good friend of mine. And this picture was on the beach after the, we'd lost, a, we had a big hole in the bottom of the ship and uh, the, anchor, the, the anchor that we ran over is laying under the ship here. This is also on Utah Beach. This is, uh, this is the way the top deck looked when we were hauling troops. These are English troops. Hang tight, we got okay. a big glare on that. Okay. Probably well, we can't, maybe. Can we just tip it, the book? Sure, if that makes a difference. That helps? Oh, that's okay, I like that. But okay. Yeah, go ahead, tell us about that. These thing. are, uh, we picked these fellows up in uh, England and we're taking them over to Utah Beach. And these are English troops. We couldn't get any of them to go below decks. They wanted to stay on top. They didn't like, they didn't like the torpedoes. <laughs> this is me, this is me at the con. All the officers took turns running the ship. Now where are you, right up there on the top? I'm right up there on the top. Far cry from Sterling, Colorado. Yeah, I guess so. This is, uh, this is La Harve, France. This one, or you want this one? Are you over there? That's right, no. Yeah. La Harve, yeah. This is La Harve, yeah. And uh, we were loading German prisoners here in this picture, I don't you just see a couple of them here, but we filled up the whole tank deck with prisoners. And then... Now, would you say the tank deck, is that the deck that you carried tanks on, or...? Yes, mm -hmm. that was the lower, that was the lower deck. Uh -huh. John, I'll just, don't worry about it. Are you still got the thing on? Yeah. Oh, well, I was going to... all the time. Oh, okay. But this, I was going to try... Well, here's the, if you look at this, you can see the tank decks in here. When we got on the beach, we don't lower this ramp here, and then the tanks would come out of here, and the upper, upper level is where we had the troops up on the upper deck. Okay. Okay, and that's just dang sign on the way. Here's the else. Here's the boat that went to the Rhine, the 642. We had it up on the main deck, and then we had to list. See, we took our uh, we took our LST and listed it as far as we could, put enough water on the one side to list it, and then we launched this off of our top deck. And then this ship went on to the Rhine. Slid it off. Slid it off. Uh -huh. Slipped it off to the Rhine. Wow. Yeah. And here's a patrol boat coming out to see us. You can see how sleek we look. This, this is of Utah Beach again here. This is a bunch of transports that'll go on into. This is France this way. These are. These are balloons. We carried balloons. Every LST had a balloon on a wire, and we carried them so that airplanes wouldn't get real low and come in on us. So we, as soon as, soon as we get near the beach, we'd put these up, and then we'd tow them down when we had started back to uh, England. We didn't run on away with them, but you can see those around. That's to keep the, that's to keep the airplanes from coming in on us. Did you have much of that? Uh, not not time we got there. No, no, it was pretty. Oh, I did want to say this. This is the guy that uh, got the award for uh, saving the. This is our first lieutenant. He's the one in small boat, and uh, he jumped into the water and worked with the helping to get the people out, and they gave him a commendation for that. Here's one of our guns. There's 20 millimeter gun. Yeah, that's, it was our sec, our executive officer. Uh, we had to, we had to have him leave the ship. He, 
he had a nervous breakdown and he, uh, uh, I don't know what happened to him. This was a, this is another load going across. You can see with the Jeeps and the guys in uniform, well, we're taking them across to, to France. And that's La Havre again. That's just orders. Oh, here now we're in, <laughs> we're back in America now. Here's the, uh, get to the big headlines, say here's the deal. Oh, yeah, here. Well. Five die, 165 hurt, munition ship blows up. We were right, we were right next door, just tied up with him. And you can see the bow of it, you can see what happened, it just blew it clear over the top. And that was right next to you? Yep. Wow. Yeah, in fact, uh, That was, yeah, it did. It just, uh, well, here's a couple of sailors here off of that. But it mentions the LST 920 was towed to sea after the collision. There's a Thanksgiving after that. That was, this is the LST 28 now. I've been transferred from the 920 to the 28. So we had some action on the 920, and then we had this on the 28. And then this is a, this is a good friend on the ship that was really needed sketching. And when I finally got off to go home, didn't have many points, but when I got enough points to go home, he gave me that as I left the ship. <laughs> Pretty cute, wasn't it? <laughs> He's left on the ship. And then this is, uh, this is uh, Schaefer, I think, or one on the hill. Well, here's the, here's the French medal there. And here's a list of... Uh, What's this? This is the French medal? This is the French medal for, uh, what they call it? They had a name on it. Uh, I don't know. I'll tell you. I going to say. Medal of Jubilee of Liberty. Okay. Has been, uh, it came from France. And this is a list of the ships that were sunk in the combat ships in the war. And this is the one, this is our sister ship that was torpedoed. It says, uh, sub by sub in the English Channel on the 14th of August, and that's the one we picked up the survivors. When were you awarded that? Uh, uh, really, it would, it, it would have been, let's see. Let's see. Well, this time, this was, excuse me, it was Saturday. September 23rd, 2000. But I could have had it many years sooner because they, they wrote us and told us if we'd come to France, they would give it, but you had to go there. They wouldn't deliver it. And I didn't want to go to France. <laughs> so it <laughs> worked out. <laughs> so I think that's it. <laughs> Who, what did Harry have to say there? <laughs> oh, Harry? Yeah, that's your discharge? Yeah, that was Harry. No, that was Harry. Uh, yeah, Harry Truman, to those who answered the call of your country and served as armed forces to bring about such a Hold defeat. That up for her. Okay. We want all this stuff. Yeah, well, kind of brings back memories. Most of them, pretty good. Good people on the ship. <laughs>